Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. I appreciate all the love and support on the recent videos. Hopefully you guys are really digging this and I'm gonna ask for a favor because it really helps me. I'll be sure to give these things a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to turn on notifications. So we're dropping three videos Monday, Wednesday, and Saturdays. Leave your comments below what you want me to cover in the next upcoming videos. I got a list of topics going on that I've gathered from all you guys uh, and I'm gonna try to chop them away here and in the gym to kind of give you some feedback. Uh, we're talking about the overhead. We're talking about either that the strict, the push press, maybe the jerk. Um, it kind of depends on your goals and what you're doing, when and how you use them. But the question are, how wide should my grip be? Where should my grip be? And also, do I arch my back or kind of stay straight? And these kind of depend on the lift itself. Um, you know, I'm no weightlifting uh, expert. Uh, that's something that I'll flat out put out there, but I'm doing a lot of reading, a lot of watching, a lot of studying, and obviously I'm trying to live it myself, training five, six days a week in the sport with someone, Ben, my coach at Occam Athletics, who's been in the sport for 10 plus years, so I'm really trying to soak it all up. So the jerk, we're going to kind of leave alone, um, although with the jerk, uh, some people do like a little bit wider of a grip to shorten the distance, obviously depending on the individual and, the, and, and how they clean and their mobility, uh, and then two, you may have some arch in the thoracic. Uh, spine in the upper back uh, with a jerk. Push press, overhead, I'm a little more comfortable with. Some of it is a little bit like the bench press. Um, you do want to kind of figure out what works best for you, but typically to start just outside shoulder width is probably a good place to stay. Um, with a strict press, you don't want an extra wide grip. You want to stack these joints as much as you can, meaning that when I'm staying upright, you want to go fist, barbell, wrist in a straight position, forearm, elbow, kind of in a line. If you're out here, uh, too much, you're just going to put too much pressure on your rotators uh, and you're not going to be able to use your prime movers, the delts, the triceps uh, to their optimal ability. Too close of a grip is kind of the same thing where that forearm is leaning inside. Uh, some people obviously, uh, you, um, you guys are going to point to somebody on YouTube or on Instagram, this guy has the closest overhead grip and he pushes 200 kilograms. Well, Michael Jordan jumps from the free throw line. If you try to jump or dunks from the free throw line, if you try to jump just the way Michael Jordan jumps, you're not going to dunk from the free throw line. Uh, we can't point uh, to outliers. We can't point to the best. Um, and sometimes people are strong in spite of how they lift. Uh, and especially in powerlifting, I, that, that seems to be true. In weightlifting, typically the best often are a good combination of technicalities, uh, being technical at lifter and having the strength in pulls, uh, upper back, triceps, arms, shoulders, uh, squats. Um, where in powerlifting, um, some people can get away with lifting less than optimal. Uh, and I obviously can't go around uh, and point fingers because they're lifting way more than me. And if they're being successful, they're being successful. But that's just kind of how it goes. Same thing uh, with maybe basketball. I reference that a lot. Obviously, I played it for 10 years, but Larry Bird's jump shot probably wasn't as picturesque um, as maybe uh, someone like a Ray Allen, although you could argue, or, or Reggie Miller's uh, form isn't that great in comparison, but they're all three some of the best shooters of all time. So it's kind of hard to argue. But to start, we want to go just outside shoulder width. Um, you can experiment a little bit, just like anything else we're doing when we're training. Um, following a program is going to help, but uh, making small adjustments over time. You know, if you're uh, doing shoulder width overhead and then you just switch it six inches each side, uh, you're not going to know the difference. You want to just easily creep if you think there is something to be fixed. Um, in terms of arching, with the strict press in particular, there probably should um, be no arching. You should be able to stack your upper body uh, as much as you can. Now, uh, some people do coach kind of a lean back uh, to get that bar moving off of your chest or if you're resting on your delts in a front rack position. That may be necessary as uh, you're just not uh, very strong in a very low position. Uh, elbow position is going to matter a lot too depending on the lift. Uh, kind of a strict press, your elbows may be pointing more straight downwards. Um, a push press, your elbows may be a little bit more in front of your body. Uh, and then a jerk, your elbows may be even more in front of your body, almost uh, starting to get towards horizontal uh, tricep towards the ground. Leaning back um, isn't going to automatically burst your spine. Our spine is made to move, but we do want to always continue to focus on breathing and bracing, keeping a tight middle, flexing your sides, flexing your stomach, using a belt if you're going heavy uh, can help. Some of that intra-abdominal pressure, the Valsalva maneuver, really flexing that midline um, to allow you a more sturdy base. Uh, having your feet shoulder width apart, squeezing your glutes forward, squeezing your quads as much as you can. Getting tight, which is probably something everyone's always yelled at you, but basically all that means is we're trying to find stability through our entire system, through the entire chain, especially with something like an overhead. 
um, the place that we're moving, the, the, the weight itself, the load itself is so far away from where we're grounded, where we're planted, right? Our feet are the only thing holding us down. Where if the bench press, right, our shoulders, our traps, our, our, our upper body is planted on the bench and all that's moving is our arms. Now we have to find stability through our whole system with the upper body, which is uh, with the overhead press, which is why it's such a great movement, uh, but why it's also very difficult. I do think it's something uh, that I want to work on a little bit more. I'm working on my push press. I'm trying to figure out the jerk, trying to get my overhead positioning a little bit better. It's something that uh, I've never really paid a lot of attention to. Uh, I feel really good and I've been really, really strong with dumbbell shoulder press and overhead. And for my past goals, getting better at bench press or building some deltoids, it's worked out great for me. The standing dumbbell overhead, the seated over, uh, dumbbell overhead, all really, really good. But when it comes to a barbell, I'm just not good there. So uh, I'm going to be putting in at least two to three days a week working on that overhead, whether it's a push press uh, or behind the head push press or even some type of jerk. Um, so be sure to follow along with that progress as my overhead positioning starting to get better. Uh, but now it's a matter of getting my rack good enough that I can really uh, start to fling some weights around. Because when you're doing a push press or a jerk, yes, you're using some delts in a sense to catch the, on the jerk and stability and to push a little bit on the push press. Uh, it's kind of a spectrum. The strict press is mostly deltoids moving that, uh, moving that barbell. The push press is half kind of a, a dip with your legs, a little bit of momentum, and then pushing with your shoulders. And the jerk is basically all momentum from the lower body. My lower body is really, really strong. It's just I can't get that barbell perfectly rested on my delts yet to get that momentum uh, to, to move that power through the chain to get it over my head. But I think once I do, uh, we'll be able to move some decent weight and it should be really fun. So things I'm working on there, um, <clears throat> a lot of it's trial and error, uh, but again, the basics, shoulder width or a little bit wider stance, shoulder width-ish, a little bit wider grip, uh, squeezing that bar really tight, getting it right here, stacking it on your forearms, your elbows, squeezing the bar tight, squeezing your midline, uh, and trying to press in as straight of a line as possible. Kind of like a squat, you're going to try to keep that bar over your midfoot. Uh, if it travels too far forward or backwards, you're going to lose some of that bounce. Uh, let me know below what you guys think. What's your best overhead compared to your best bench press? Something I'm very interested in. Uh, those ratios, I'm sure someone's crunch numbers out there, uh, but it'd be cool to see a little survey how you guys are doing with that. Again, appreciate the support. Salam Mike. I'm out of here.